Hallelujah. And so as we do that, as the psalmist goes into a worship after Psalm 100, he comes with this in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. And that is our intro to worship right now. That as we lift our hands and as we worship and as we open our mouths, we say thank you, God. Somebody just say thank you, God, from your own heart. Hallelujah. Just say thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let me just speak a blessing over this service right now. Father God, we bless you. And we pray your peace over this service right now, that everything will be done decently and in order. With the fire of the Holy Spirit, with the zeal of the Spirit, we will worship together, smile and rejoice. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength tonight. And our children will know the, inherit the inheritance of those who trust in the Lord God. And Lord God, in this season and in this time, we pray that you would undergird our worship with your loving kindness. So that, Lord God, we would be renewed as youth in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. As we're getting ready, please welcome our sister Christine. As she comes, please welcome her. Let me give God praise for Christine. Amen. So this is Sister Christine. She and uh, she and her husband, Errol. Errol Wayne from the PA. Look at Errol up there. Look how beautiful he looks. That's because of Christine cream up his face. And she has blessed him with their first baby, which is, is Isaiah there. All right, wave Isaiah. All right, amen. And we want to bless you and thank God for your ministry. Amen. Over to you. Amen. We have indeed come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Hallelujah.
worship you, Lord, in this place tonight. What a mighty God. All year he has kept us. Hallelujah. My God. Great God. Let our praises rise. Because he deserves it. Because he's so good. Hallelujah. Let praises rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory, let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise.
from the inside, from the inside, come, in. come fill my, come fill my life. Come on, make it your prayer. From the inside, sing it to Him. From the inside, sing it to Him. Set me on fire. From the inside, from the inside, from the inside. From the all I want, all I want, all I want is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted All I want is for you, is for you, you to be glorified, you to be lifted All I,
year 2018 For him to come fill your life Fill your life For him to set you on fire On fire To renew you To restore you To set you free Cause he can do it Set you free He can set you free And he can heal you can deliver you, my God, for He loves you with an everlasting love, an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Let us sing the first bit, the first bit again, the first bit again. This time you sing it. From the inside, 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 from the inside,
Jesus. Yes, all I want is to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, he is in the presence with us. Amen. And it's so good to see so many of you here this evening coming to 2017, entering 2018. I must greet my husband, Bishop Dr. Jackson. Can you stand? Yes, you can give him a clap. He hasn't got his blue suit on. He's got black on today, but that's fine. We also have uh, Dr. Bishop Webley in the house with us today, our National Secretary. Could you stand? Bless you. Amen. Amen. My husband just sprung it on me that he wanted me to say a few words, so I will give you a few words. I just want to say how grateful I am to know that I'm standing here. I'm with my family in the house of God. Who could it be but God? Things could have been so different at the beginning of 2017, but the Lord has kept my family. He's kept us steadfast in him. And my desire for 2018, again, is to be a better, a better Christian, um, to walk closer to God because I can see... It's almost tangible what we can see the move of the Holy Spirit, what he's doing. And we need to be ready, church. We can't get ourselves ready. We need to be ready now. And especially for the younger women, um, I would say my age in our 40s um, and slightly less, we really need to um, step up to the mark. The uh, senior women, I must commend you um, for your fervency for the prayer and fasting that you've put down for the church of God, I want to say I love you so much. And had it not been for your prayers, had it not been for your prayers, and we just want to say we thank you so much for your dedication. For the men who have labored in and out around the church, we want to say thank you to you also. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I just want to draw closer to God and be a better Christian. That's my desire and that my children, uh, Eugene is a born again Christian, that she gets closer to the Lord. And also Gabriella, she's eight years old, um, but I know she wants to get baptized at some point. Um, and even when um, my husband was um, doing the communion today, she wanted some wine and bread. But I said, it's not time yet, but um, in all good time. And I just want you to pray for my husband. It's been a, a difficult year, um, you know, so many different things, personal things, family, um, you know, and sickness. And I just want you to just pray for my in-laws, especially who are going through it. They're righteous people. Um, you know, he comes from good stock, and um, I love them dearly, and I need them to be with us throughout the 2018, so please pray for them also. But family, we love you so much, and we thank you for walking with us from 2017, and we want to do together what we haven't done from 2017. We want to walk together, be better Christians, you know, lift up the name of God, be greater evangelists when the Lord gives us opportunities um, with people at work, on the street, to evangelize. Let's do it. The opportunity is there. Don't second guess or second think. The opportunity is there. God has given us that. And, you know, we just need to just lift up the name of the Lord. And we have our own buildings. Isn't it a blessing to have two buildings? That's a bit quiet, isn't it? You know, the Lord has been faithful to us. So I'm going to call Dr. Webley now. Can you be upstanding as he comes? Bishop, thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Bishop Jackson, Sister Jackson family, you do me much honor inviting me to share with the congregation this evening. I'm here because I want to be in church and I want to be at a place where I know the presence of the Lord is. I'm so privileged that I can go to any church in the country and they can't stop me from coming in. But it's even better when they want you in. And I've chosen to come here because every time I come here, I receive such blessing. It's so good to be amongst you. Bishop Bolt and I are privileged. We're really privileged to hold the offices we hold in this church and to serve from the vantage point that we have. And we see so many things right across the spectrum of the country. And one thing we can conclude is God is good to us. It's always a privilege to be at The Rock. And I want to thank you and the ministry of your bishop and his team 
for your contribution towards the work of the New Testament Church of God in England and Wales throughout this year. Thank you for not just your giving, but your time, your Christian service to this church. Thank you for working with your bishop to serve your community, to be there for people in different circumstances and situations, and for being that light, that light in a part of the city that has radiated the glory of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you. We sit where we sit and we know that the work of the church is not done because people talk about it, but it's done because people serve. And I want to thank you so much, Bishop Sister Jackson and your team, for serving in the way you have. And may I encourage you to continue to do so. The national church is as strong as the local church. And we need strong local churches because we need a strong center. Sometimes when you sit around the desk and you see so many things go across your desk. Because where I sit, everything comes across my desk. Only certain things come across Bishop Bolt's desk. But everything comes across my desk. And sometimes when you look at it, if you look at it through a human eye, you would be discouraged before you start. But if you trust God and believe that he who has begun the work is more than able to complete that work, you draw confidence knowing that the work is not yours, but it is the Lord's. So rock, be strong. And as I take my seat, I share with you something I share for myself which has really encouraged me. From the gospel according to St. John chapter 10. Verses 29 through to 31. There the narrative of the sparrow is pronounced. And there is a conversation there saying, look. Whatever it costs for a sparrow. None of them can fall to the ground. Unless your heavenly father knows about it. And if he has that interest in a flock of sparrows. How much more does he have in you? So if you came in this meeting tonight feeling undervalued, I'm here to tell you that you are blessed and you are highly favored and you are in the right place tonight, under the right leadership tonight. And as rocky as the waters may get at time, stay in the boat because the storm will pass. So do me a big favor. Turn to your next door neighbor and say to your next door neighbor, you are blessed and you are highly favored. And if a sparrow can't fall to the ground without the father knowing, nothing can happen to you unless God ordains it. Rejoice, Rock. Give God thanks and thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Greetings, brethren. I want to greet the members, visitors, and friends. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your commitment to this church, The Rock, throughout 2017. There's been some challenges. I give God thanks for what he has done in this church and what he continues to do. God has big plans for The Rock. Amen? Amen. You don't sound like you're convinced of that. God has big plans for the rock. Amen. And I've seen that God has been working in the lives of his people. I've seen change. I've seen growth. And I've seen transformation. And I give God thanks for what I have witnessed for myself. And I want to send a word of encouragement to you to keep going. Sickness comes, but God is our great healer. Trouble come, but God is our defender. Hallelujah. When there is a need and you've identified the need, the Lord is faithful to supply every need according to his riches in glory. Amen. And I want to say to you that God is faithful to his promises. I know sometimes that 
Sometimes when the Lord says something and he has sent his word, sometimes that word may tarry for a little while. And you may look and say, Lord, you said this and you said that, but I still can't quite see it yet. But he says, look to the hills. It's coming. Though it tarries, wait for it. Amen? Approximately 15 years ago, approximately, approximately, without giving her away my age. Back in the day when we had youth convention at Telford. Anybody remember that? You sure? All right. And... I recall going to the altar when I had altar call. And to this day, I don't know who it was, but someone came to me and they prophesied in my ear. And they said to me that, I don't know what you do for a living, but all I can say to you is that whatever it is that you're meant to be doing, it is also your ministry. Your work has something to do with your ministry. And that word has remained and tarried with me for over 15 years. And I'm standing before you today, tonight, brethren, to tell you that in 2017, I have stepped into my ministry and my calling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Full time. To God be the glory. Though it tarries, wait for it. The Lord has good things in store for you. His mind is always on you, and it's always good things and not evil. Therefore, I say to you tonight that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are the head and not the tail. You are highly favored before God. And so go forth in 2018, believing and understanding that God has something great in store for you. Do you believe that? God has something great in store for you. Therefore, it may be challenging, but the Lord never gives you more than you can handle. Amen? So I want you to raise your hands, clap your hands for the Lord, for what he has in store for you. Give him thanks in advance for the blessings that are coming, because he is faithful, and he is good, and his mercies endure forever. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. I want to greet my pastor and first lady, especially Bishop Webley. You go a long way back. I was reading about um, his time. Today, I was reading about your time of leading the Council of Black Led Churches. Dynamic young bishop is how you were described. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I just want to thank, I really want to thank the church for this year. And it's been a bit of a I'll start from the beginning. I remember this time last year I was saying, I know many of you come to bury the old year. But don't bury the old year because learn from it. Because you might end up making the same mistakes time and time again. Be careful what you speak. Because this year has been really challenging. And I've seen the grace of God in my life. In a way, I guess I've never seen him before. In the middle of the year, we lost a couple of really dear friends, and I have to be honest with you, I had a lot of questions I had to ask God, questions I've never asked God before, and my faith in God was really tested and challenged, and I, at some point, I kind of withdrew myself a little bit, but, you know, three all, and members of this church, especially my care team, I love you guys, you know, took time out to pray and to encourage me. People just started coming to this church. You know, young Christians took time, saw my pain, and took time to come and encourage and to lay hands and to pray with me. And I saw the blessings of sweet fellowship with one another. If there's one thing I want to leave with us tonight is that we need each other. Somehow the church seems to have been a little bit on a downer this year. And I, I, I thought Bishop would ask us to say something. I thought, what can I say? I don't, want to, I don't want to bring the service down, but I want us to always remember that we have to be Christ-like. We have to, in order for us to go back up, we've got to be Christ-like. Our whole life has got to reflect Christ. And I realize that this year, and coming towards the end of this year, that I wasn't, 
at the place that I should have been in Christ. And I remember one morning I woke up and the Spirit of God says to me, Rejoice in the things I did in your friend's life rather than dwell on the fact that I took them early. Rejoice in the things that I did in their lives rather than the fact that they took them early. I also want to thank my wife. Love you dearly. Always there. Take it for granted sometimes. But you're always a tower of strength. And somehow God has given you the grace these few years to learn when to keep quiet sometimes. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a bad way. You know, see, Claudine sits there and she looks so quiet, but she hot. <laughs> but she's a fire to my coolness. Praise be to God. The scripture that has really always ministered to me this year, Isaiah 65, verse 24. Before you call, I will answer. And while you're yet speaking, he will answer. That just kept coming back to me and coming back to me and coming. Because it said to me, God is not taken by surprise. So whatever we're going through, whatever challenges we face, remember that scripture. He's not taken by surprise. Glory be to God. And he knows the end from the beginning. I love you all. I really do. It's a pleasure to serve in this church. It's a pleasure to serve under Bishop Jackson because he does more than anybody else. He might ask you to do stuff, but he does more than he asks us to do. Isn't that true? You don't sound convinced. And I, sit, and I stand here, I'm coming down, but I stand here to say, let us work with him this year. Let us work, let's look and let's see and let's endeavor to do the work of the Lord in this house this year and take some of the burden off our bishop. He has his own challenges this year with his parents. So we've got to step up to the mark. Ministers, the head of departments, I'm challenging us this year that let's raise it to another level. Can we do that? Come on, you don't sound convincing. Can we do that this year? Amen. Glory be to God. I love you all. Happy New Year. Bless you. If you love Jesus, just shout a hallelujah into the atmosphere. Amen. It's good to be amongst my brothers and sisters in the house of the Lord and to give God thanks. I was just um, musing on my way down. I was thinking, you know, uh, I'm a church boy through and through. I was, uh, in, in the, back in the day, you would say, my parents held me under heavy manners. So I don't know what it is to prepare yourself on New Year's Eve to go to club. I have no idea what it is like. What kind of dress you would wear. What kind of shoes you would put on. Where you would even go. Some people talk about Tasha's. It's foreign to me. <laughs> that finished long time. Hummingbird. <laughs> Which one now? Them all gone? Lord Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't even know. Her. But you know, and I laugh, I laugh at my upbringing sometimes and how my parents shielded me and uh, brought me up in, in church. And uh, I was joking the other day and saying, the only place we go is to church. Uh, we're coming back from church. Uh, we're going to somebody else's house to have church. So... But, you know, it, it brought me, it gave me good stead, gave me a good foundation, gave me principles for life, and I can never thank them enough. And in this year where we've seen many of our uh, founder members and some of our elders who have played such a vital role in my life, uh, I have been reflecting on my upbringing and the impact that they made. And some of them are not legendary in terms of, they may not have a plaque on the wall or they may not have trophies that we have given or certificates. But I tell you, I have been blessed in some untellable ways by some wonderful people. Brother Bailey, Deacon Hines, and the others that have gone on uh, within this year and the year that, uh, last year as well. I cannot tell you how much they are my heroes. They are my 
idols. Because when I grew up in church, I knew, as I said, all, all my life is in church. So I, all these big men like Derek Webley and uh, Ron Brown and Eric Brown and all these, I knew all of their names. I knew all of their history. I used to read the convention programs from back to front. I know all about them and I would love to emulate them. I would follow my dad around as he would go around the country preaching uh, and different places when he was doing youth talent and stuff like that. So I had good experience of ministry going around and seeing uh, these wonderful men and women do there. And obviously my mom is a firebrand preacher, a prayer warrior as well. So all of these things have been contributory to me taking up the mantle for ministry. In, uh, and particularly in this year, it's been a very tough year in terms of my studies. And I have had to reflect on why do I do the things that I do in terms of ministry. And in a black-led church as well, there are uh, different challenges that you may not be aware of as you sit in your seat. But you see men like Bishop Jackson, you see men like Bishop Webley standing in the pulpit or in the office. And they have lots of challenges that you would, wouldn't even think they would have to go through and things sometimes they bear the personal burdens uh, for ministry in their hearts and in their minds and they can't even really express it to anybody and I, I see this from a closer uh, point and I just want to thank God that we have the men and women that we have upholding this community and doing the work for God as they have been called to do they have been honest and they have been pure to the calling that they have and that's the key thing that I want to leave with you as I draw my, my little speech to a close, is that every person has the call of God upon their life. It doesn't matter if you have a fantastic name or if you have a fantastic history. It doesn't matter what side of town you are born on, what side of the tracks. Every person has a call of God upon their life and can do mighty, wondrous, great things for God. All you have to do is be true to that call. Invest in yourself. Know that God has done something Bring that call out of yourself and then move forward with God. And I thank God for this church and that they have allowed me to be true to the call that of God that has been placed on my life. At one time, as I said, I was reading all those programs, convention programs, and thinking I would love to be a preacher one day. I would love to be a minister one day. Never really knew that I would be able to stand here at the verge of 2018 being a licensed minister, studying theology, which I have loved to do in my first degree, I did electronics, nothing to do with ministry whatsoever. And I struggled through that. And if I'm honest with you, I didn't even finish it because my calling was in a different thing altogether. But thanks be to God, I'm in my lane. And for me to say that now, it's taken a lot of praying, fasting, and all kind of things happen for me to get to the know, to be true to my calling. And you don't have to be boastful of anything else except for God has ordered you to do something great on the earth. That's it. I'm not making, I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for fame or a name or anything else. I just want to be true to the calling of God upon my life. And I want you to do the same. So some of you in 2018, you need to phone Bishop Jonathan Jackson Make an appointment to come see him in the office and be honest about what the call of God is upon your life. Because our founder members are going or have gone. And as I said, you've heard me preach this before. I must leave a legacy on the earth. My children must know that I did something great on the earth. And the same must be said of you as well. Amen. Put your hands together and give God praise in this house. For he is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. Now, all of my teaching and training, I went through Sunday school, I went through FTH, I went through, I think I just caught the end of YPE. I was just, just young enough to get that. I've been to theological school, and I tell you, all of this training, the one thing I cannot do is dance. I was not blessed in this way. I can preach and jump. I can jump. I can jump. I can do the side step, the two step. I might get a little hand clap in there as well and coordinate it as well. But that's as far as it goes. But I want to see some dancing in the house today. Is that all right? Can you show me how to dance? Amen. Yvonne or Christina, whoever, please come with one of, 
a dancing tune. Because as I said, I've never been to club. But I know how to dance in the house of the Lord, the two-step. So jump to your feet, jump to your feet, jump to your feet, jump to your feet. Shake the hand of your neighbor and say, you're going to dance with me today. Oh, you don't sound ready, you don't sound ready. Tell somebody, revive the club moves, revive the club moves and give them to Jesus. All right, a little bit after this, we're going to do some testimony service, okay? hands together and give God praise. Amen, amen, amen. Remain standing. I need four people to run up here real quick. Real quick, real quick. Four people to, that wants to give a testimony. I've only got four slots. Just keep that one going. Four slots, four slots, four slots. One. Three more, three more, real quick. All right, two more, two more, two more. Got one coming. We are going up. We're going up to... We're going up together. We're going up to conquer. We're going up to conquer. In the name of the Lord. I need one more person, one more person. We are, we are, we are going up. We are going up. Well, mine has been amazing.
amazing. Right, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. So in January, um, was a quiet month. No, um, the beginning of the year, I started with no job. And um, I got made redundant in September last year and had three months off to um, celebrate. Anyway, um, then I said to the Lord at the end of January, at the end of December, I need a job, Lord, I need a job. And he gave me a job in the beginning of January. The job was only supposed to be for three months. It ended up for being for five months. The last day I was supposed to be working in the three-month job, I got offered another job. Um, and I said, well, I'm, I'm working till May. And they said, okay, then we'll wait for you. So the wait is in May. So in May, I got a job, and it was supposed to finish, like, September this year, uh, fe February next year, but it finished early. And um, I had, like, I was told that I was going to finish that job. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I need a job. And the Lord got me another job at the end of October. But I'd already filled up my November with other events. So what I did is that I said, I can't do it. I can't start straight away. I could start at the beginning of December. Is that okay? And they said, yes, we'll wait for you. So that's two times people waited for me this year. Not very often they do that, but they did. And um, that was a blessing in itself. And also, in, January, in July of this year, we did our first drum production in a professional theatre, which was absolutely amazing. We are looking forward to doing it again next year. And we're also taking the show to London as well. So God has been amazing this year. 2018 is going to be absolutely awesome. So please pray for me, pray for Tracy Letman as well, and TNT Productions as we move forward in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, God is good at all the time. Okay, very quick testimony. 20 years ago, quick testimony, I was in a dead end job and I was uh, doing, I had just finished my mathematics degree and, and I was really liking doing mathematics. And everyone was telling me to give up mathematics because it was a dead end job. You will never uh, get to the top of what you're doing with doing the mathematics. And God said this to me. He told me to pick up and run with my mathematics and give him the glory every step of the way. So I thought, okay, I'll be obedient, but I'll just carry on and do as he, as he say. But what was significant was, was this year, I, remember, I was uh, really pursuing my mathematics, and I got a, an email from a, from a magazine called The New Scientist, and The New Scientist says, Dr. Chamberlain, we would like you to come to an event. We, we, we would like you to present at this event. And I thought, okay, I'll go to and do a talk at this event. And I said, oh, by the way, we have these other mathematicians there, two professors from Oxford University, two professors from Cambridge University, and a professor from Edinburgh University. And we would like you to present there as well. And I thought, okay. So I went there and I brought my lovely wife. And I was sitting and, and I just saw these, these um, profession, uh, professors of mathematics doing this thing. And it was really, really doing a good job. And I said to my wife, I said, I'm getting really nervous. And my wife took me to, to the side and saying, I'm going to pray for you. And she said, Lord, give him wisdom. Give him boldness. Give him... <laughs> make, him make him speak with wisdom. I was like, okay. So I went on the stage. I went on the stage. I went on the stage. And I just focused on what I needed to do. And they said, what, was, um, what was the conclusion was that my presentation was actually the best presentation of the day. Yeah. 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 And I thank God for a strong wife that's backed me all the way. Yeah? And then from then on in, it's gone, my mathematical career has gone from strength to strength. I've been having more invitations from schools. And I do apologize for not recognizing your daughter. <laughs> and um, I like one big event that actually occurred was um, in October, they decided, because there's not many black mathematicians, and they thought, well, here's a black mathematician who did really well at this event and has a, is doing very well in his career. So they decided, a group decided, to, the whole Mathematical Society of the United Kingdom decided to dedicate the month of October as Black Mathematician Month, where they had a national campaign de um, profiling black mathematicians from around the world, and they had me do, doing the final speech, you know, doing the final conference, talking about mathematics, and again, I want to give God the glory every step of the way. Oh, I'm really shy. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless 
want to give God thanks. Um, I wouldn't be here today. I should be at Highgate. <laughs> yes, um, but um, I'm here with my nieces. You know, I, took, I stole them away to have dinner. And I said, you know, rather than running back to Highgate, um, come and um, be here. Um, that was my brother-in-law, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he's a lovely guy. And um, I can say God is being good, you know. Uh, I can see, I can see, I mean, what I see here. I mean, and I, I'm really, I love to reach out for the young men. Because too, much, too many of them are sort of, you know, not finding a way. So I'm going around the city and I'm looking for talents. Um, I've met a young lady called Malika. She plays the violin. So we've linked up together. Um, I'll tell you, I'm an artist. Uh, art, I do art and craft. Um, I've done cra technical graphic design. You know, I'm also a beautician and a beauty consultant. Not only that, I'm a Sunday school teacher, a Christian educator, and now I'm doing children church at the Highgate. I have ta I've taught in Redditch. Everybody thought I think I'm from Redditch, but I'm grounded in Highgate, Highgate Church. I helped out at um, Edgebaston, you know, and I do I travel around the city. And um, God has provided me, well, last year, is it last year, December, um, New Year's Eve, was it not New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve, I had a crash in my car. I, did, I keep getting cars every three months, it keeps changing because the car blows up on me. No, seriously, you know, I'm on the road and the engine blows up. So, somebody at the youth convention gave me... A, a card and gave it me for Ford car. So I thought I'd take this car down, you know. They charged me 1,500 for this car. And I took it to Ford and Ford said, you've had a rubbish car. Everybody's saying, oh, this is really good. And when I went to Ford, I said, I landed up at the brand new car. I said, oh, check it out, see how much the cars are. And then I went away. Yeah, I said, I can afford it, but I need some money, you know, to spend. So I went to the second hand car the next day and ordered a second hand car. Then what they did to me, they um, said, come, yeah, I'm wrapping it up. Yeah, but it's, you know, I just have to tell you how God has blessed me. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only me, it, he'll bless, he'll bless you as well. I haven't been working for 27 years. Yeah. And I would not be in here at all. You know, I've been places that I don't even know where I've been. You get me? So I'm coming from a long way because, you know, God, you know, has brought me out. And I'm reaching around the city, reaching young people. I do origami, which is folding with paper and art and craft. Yeah, I'm wrapping it. Yeah. So I managed to buy myself a brand new car on my birthday, 2017. And 2018, I know with all your prayers, because I have not been through any of this without the church behind me praying. So young ones, remember, go to your elders and ask them to pray for you because they will pray for you. All right, Sister Graham, you just have to take a seat there and then you can come. No song, Sister Graham. We don't have no time. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'll just a bit. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad that I can stand here today um, to give a testimony. I would like to thank my church, um, brethren, pastor, and everyone for praying for me. And what I would like you to do for me today for 2018 is do a special prayer for me so that I can walk through these doors without using my stick. You pray for me in Jesus' name. Come on, Sister Graham. 
I'm, I'm going to stand next to you. Let us praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm giving God thanks for seeing me through this year. It could have been worse, but praise God, I am alive. And, uh, you know, the rest, God has given me a good age, right? And I mean to go forward more, although sometimes pain rocks the body, but I want to lift up myself. Amen. 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 And some of the things that I want to be in it. Yes, I want to lift up myself more in 18. In 18. Yes, and may you all pray for me. Lift me up above the shadow. Lift me up and let me stand on the mountain hills of glory. Lift me up. Lord, lift me up. So I'm asking you to pray for me. Well, <laughs> The, the bishop, the bishop, give her a license for one song. That's all I know. I'm going on right. Come on, you gotta get to your feet. All I know. I'm going on. One more time. Come on and put your hands together for Sister Graham. <laughs> Come on, Bishop. I was on my way into town and I, I caught the bus and I saw Sister Graham eight, on the 87. And she says, Brother Nathan. And it was like a full testimony service from Cape Hill right down. <laughs> it's church we was having. Praise God. I tell you, I felt the Holy Ghost on the 87 that day. Amen, amen. I'm handing over to the bishop. <laughs> amen. Which, are you coming back? <laughs> oh, that's your neighbor's family. Oh, that's lovely. It's lovely for you, no? God bless you, no? Praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. Amen. I don't know what kind of church we would have if we didn't have our elders. Amen. Let's give God praise for our elders, amen. Wherever they are, we thank God for them, amen. Tonight we're going to be asking you for a special offering because we don't want you to spend it all on alcohol. Plenty of you are going out to go booze up yourself. And I'm going to save your life tonight in the name of Jesus. So tell you what we're doing um, in the new year. We're going to continue our food bank project, which has been running for the last three years, I think three to four years. Carol, how long? Four years? Four years. It's expanding. And so we make sure that part of our offerings make sure that, especially the, 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 um, the free will offerings, we make sure that that feeds into that project also. So um, we're going to ask you tonight, as you are giving to the Lord tonight, make sure that you give a tangible offering. To him, and tangible means, which one? Hard or soft? Soft. Jesus. I see some of them start vex up themselves now. Lock the door, I'm going to preach till 3 o'clock when party done. Start pronouncing sickness over you so you can't eat no food at the party. Make the party bad up your belly. 
So we're hoping to run that project, and I pray and I trust that God will help us to expand and to be able to help. I want to just give a big shout out for Bless to Bless. Is Liebert here and Janet? Where are they? Where's she? All right, Janet, can you stand? Amen. Just remember them in your prayers. Janet with Bless to Bless and Liebert. Where's Liebert? I think they've nearly, I think they've, they've, they've done a, they've so much work across the region, helping the homeless with clothes, with food. They have done some major work across. Liebert, come in here quick. I stand outside like a club. Come here. Lee, come up front quick. Quick, 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 just real quick. Just flip your, t have you got your t-shirt on, bless the bless? This is Liebert. And I want to give God thanks for this brother. He's been working all the way across the region with bless the bless. And many of you know the project. It is a developed charity. Yeah? Charity that they put together themselves that helps the homeless more than many other charities that you see that you give a lot of money on the television to. <clears throat> Name, nameless. We will name this. But this guy and his wife and their team that they created just from the ground, from people who volunteer, have been helping across the region as far as Leicester and across Birmingham. So I really want you to pray for them and pray that we would, and Coventry also. And, and, they're going, and they've just been sending some barrels to Ghana as well. Amen? Praise God. Amen. God bless you. All right. Sometimes people think that we're always seeking for help, but we can help ourselves. Amen? And so I want you to just continue to pray and continue to help work with your local churches, and especially this local church, because we intend to be self-sufficient. But we want to go to the next level of self-sufficiency and be the lender and not the borrower. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The ushers are going to be waiting on you for a free will offering tonight. And so um, as the buckets go around, I want you to give according to God's blessing on your life. Worship team, I want you to come back and minister and then continue with your ministry after that. Amen. Amen. So once you're giving your offering, can you stand up and worship with us, please? As we sing, I am determined to hold out to the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus, Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. Oh, I know I have salvation. I have in my soul. Sing, I am, I am determined.
Hallelujah. Stand with me as we pray. We want to pray over your financial situation. And I don't know how critical it is, but we want to trust God for you, for the future. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Father God, thank you for this offering tonight, the gifts that people have given from their work and their financial situation. We pray your blessing over them. Thank you for those that have given. Help us, Lord God, to be studious and wise, to make great decisions financially. And in this year coming, Father God, that you would prosper us so that we could bless others in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Sister Yvonne. Praise the Lord. Isn't God good? 2018, what does that hold for you? What does it hold for you? Are you going to hold on to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords? We will not be overwhelmed in 2018. We will not be overwhelmed in 2018. Why? For He is with us till the end of the age. So I encourage you as we transition from 2017 to 2018, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Why? Because nothing can separate us from the love of God. Oh, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me fear. you do. God, we look to you. We won't be overwhelmed. Give us vision. You know just what to do.
catch you and he will keep you. Hallelujah. So you know what? So hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Anybody need reviving? Anybody need reviving? Come on. Revive us.
Praise right now. All over this place. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just stay in that worship. Let's just stay in that worship for a minute. Hallelujah. We want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. It's okay to worship. It's okay to worship. Just lift your hand and give him praise all over this place. We want to see your kingdom here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yvonne, just roll that one more time. We want to see your kingdom here. Yes, Lord. We want to see your kingdom the name Come on, help me worship. Come on. We want to see your kingdom. King Jesus. Come on now. Your name will lift it high. Your glory. Shake it up. Shake it up. Come on, musicians. Come on. Yeah. 
Somebody lift your hands and give it praise right now. All over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We bring down anything that does not represent Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I can hear this sounding. Let all the other gods fade away. Let all the other gods fade away. Can you hear me? Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Come on. You might not get a chance again. Come on. One more time, let all the other names Let all the other names fade away Jesus, King Jesus, bring healing, bring deliverance, move amongst us, heaven is touching earth, the sound of heaven touching earth, bring healing,
Somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 I got nothing else to do but to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You may be seated for a few moments. If you are blocking the doorway, we would love you to find a seat somewhere. Even you can take my seat at the front, but it costs you hundreds of pounds. If you got a seat next to you, just indicate, lift your hand, get somebody to sit down. But make sure that the doorways are clear for me for health and safety reasons. I just need to wait for you to clear yourself from the doorway just a little bit for me. Either come inside, sit down next to somebody, catch, squeeze up, whatever you do. But make sure that the doorway is clear for me, yeah? Because of health and safety. Because I don't want anybody to get in problems. Amen. You got a seat next to you? Lift your hand if you got a seat next to you anywhere. Go down to the last few moments. God bless you for coming in at 5 to 12. Kuya. <laughs> we never want to bad you up, but anyway, <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time, give me some help, eh? <laughs> some can squeeze down this side as well. There's a few other sides. Amen. Just come in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're getting to the end of this year. Please give me a countdown. I don't want to be preaching from one year to the next. Else we got problems. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. If you got a seat anywhere, just, just let folks just squeeze up next to you for two minutes. Amen. God bless you. Those of you, I really thank you for coming. But we need to clear that doorway just a little bit more for me. Even if you flow around the sides and stand around the sides, that'd be great. I don't want to have to... Um, squeeze the bouncers out and start rough out people. Lay hands suddenly. Amen. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So thankful for God to get you in the house. Amen. But for those of you who came and you never see seats, next year I will reserve you a seat, but try to be here before 12 and we will help you. Amen. This year has been eventful, to say the least, but we're grateful to God for his loving kindness, amen, and his grace towards us. His grace towards us has been so sufficient, and it keeps us from falling, amen. Tell your neighbor, God has been good to me, amen. Somebody give God praise right now. I want to personally thank all of the ministers who have helped, um, uh, just make this ministry what it is throughout this year. And uh, they've allowed us to excel where in times we should have lost. 
but God has been good. And so I thank you all personally. By God's grace, next year we'll be able to do greater things. Amen. I also want to give God thanks for our National Secretary Treasurer and the head of his team who are supporting the local churches. Amen. And we will be speaking to you for, of uh, some interest-free loans that we do not have to pay back. We should probably start run out the door now. Amen. But we will be standing together into the new year. Amen. The new year is going to be a challenge, but God's grace is going to keep us from falling. Amen. Praise God. Somebody give God praise right now. So as we close down these minutes, I want to pronounce a blessing and a benediction and try and do and, and, and give myself some pointers um, coming into this new year. And I want to give a, 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 some pointers to you and I and see if I can flow them through 18 steps of change, 18 steps of change that I'm going to just speak to you real quick on. The Bible says in Ephesians 3 verse 20 and 21, and it's a benediction on our lives. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to a, the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And so my challenge to you today is to now consider God differently as we come into this new year as I speak that benediction and blessing over you. That although certain things are not going the way we planned them, God is still able to do more than we can think and ask. Amen. Although some things are not how we planned them and how we placed the, uh, the, 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 the chess pieces on our chess game, still God is able to keep you from falling. And when God begins to move on your behalf, you must get success in Jesus' name. Amen. And so 18 points that I want to just drop on you real quick before we close. I want you to grab a few of them. Hopefully I will be producing them a little later on as well. But I want to run through them real quick. So you're not saying uh, Happy New Year whilst I'm there trying to preach. Amen. Amen. Is that okay? Errol, are you ready with the countdown up there? Don't forget. Are your watches right? Because they've been dodgy all year. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have battery now your watch? Hallelujah. Okay, grab some points for me. Just write them down. Put them down somewhere for yourself. I think the first one that I need to tell you that I have found to be the strength of my life is the first thing we need to do to step up and to move up. Elevation points. Our theme into next year is elevate. Elevate. To move up. To step up. To rise up. That is our points that we would like to flow into. And so I want to encourage you to first of all, if you haven't found yet the one who keeps you from falling, the first thing I would say to you is find God and you will find yourself. There are so many fake people around that you're frightened. I feel sorry for those who are uh, uh, dating and uh, having romance now. May God help you that you find somebody and everything is real. Because everything fake these days, everything, lip fear, can't even mention some things for you. But when the body start reacting, then you know, say everything for you. From head to toe to bottom to foot. Everything. Everything could have fear. People are not themselves. So to discover yourself, I think the first thing you need to do is find your God. Because the God of heaven who made you knows who you are. And will give you insight on how to behave like yourself. Don't fake for nobody. It tires you out and it kills you. You need to be an authentic self. The authentic human being that God has blessed you with. Be that person. Anybody who you're around and you have to be somebody else. Jump, ship, quick, run. You hear me? Run. Now, brothers, this doesn't mean that, you know, you know because all the brothers have to suffer this, you know. Sometimes, you know, you have to cope with your wife wearing weave. And that not mean just because she'll wear weave, you dash her away. You know, I've been told. I've been told. My wife's looking at me. I've been told that that is to just protect the black hair in bad weather. That's what I've been told. I still, I still don't believe it at all. I still don't believe it at all. But anyway, that don't mean say you don't dash where your missus just because, you know, she has to get the Brazilian or whatever weave. She can still rock that and still be herself. Amen. But don't make her a pedestal woman. 
And don't try and make her in your own image. You can't manage anybody in your own image. Find yourselves in the image of God. Amen. Find God and you will find yourself. Say amen somebody. Secondly, find God and you will find your purpose on earth. When you find your purpose on earth, your days on earth will be numbered but fruitful. Somebody say amen. The next thing, action your purpose without delay. So many of us are delaying our purpose on earth for a new day, but it's not going to come. So you've got to do it now. Somebody say, do it now. Amen. Let's go on quickly. Find the people that God has blessed you with to be your team to be successful together. Somebody say, amen. Sometimes you find yourself along with a group of people and they have no ambition. Somebody say, no ambition. My parents used to say, get yourself away from no ambition, people. And you know, sometimes my friend, I used to bring some of my friends home and my mother used to look at them like this. <laughs> and you know how the Caribbean parents that do that, hello, that means they go home, boy. Sometimes you're in a group of people and you've got to ask yourself, are they, are they the people who God has placed you with to be fruitful? May not mean that you step out of that case, but you've got to be in a team that is fruitful. And so I pray that God puts you in a group of people that are fruitful. I pray that God finds you those people. First, secondly, you, and then on top of that, you've got to find your collective purpose. That's part five. Find your collective purpose. When you are together, when you're married, when you're in a family, find your collective purpose. If you find a collective purpose, you will stay together. There will be no breakup. Somebody say amen. So many couples break up because they have no collective purpose. Amen. You have to focus on that. That's part five. Part six. In God, action your collective purpose. The Bible talks to us about teams that worked under God. Jesus found the disciples and he worked with them and they turned the world right side up. Amen. Somebody say amen. That's, that's up to six. I want to give you these now. These four now. Grab these four real quick. This is the lock off season. Somebody say lock off. Lock off everything unfruitful. Lock off everything destructive. Lock off everything fearful. Lock off everything selfish. Somebody say lock off. Should I give you them again? Everything unfruitful. Everything destructive. Everything fearful. Everything selfish. Lock off. Ain't doing you no good. Any selfish person around you, they say, he who takes and never gives causes famine. You hear me, somebody? In Jesus' name, I pray that God will give you revelation on this. Eleven, courage now. Somebody say courage. I want you to be courageous. 2018, you must be courageous. Courageously confront your personal pride. If your personal pride has got you in trouble before, humble yourself before your God. Confront it. Twelve, courageously confront your own ignorance. What are the things that I don't know? I need to seek God, go on a course, open university. You get the picture? College. And stop telling people you don't know. Some people you talk to, I don't know. Everything you don't know. Find something to know. That's what my parents used to do. You know when you just say you don't know. Just before them lick you. Find something to know. That's when you had to go and grab the encyclopedia. Remember those encyclopedias they had to take off the shelf and just keep reading it until them stop get vexed. Because we live in ignorance. And we have to press ourselves out of ignorance. Dr. Dr. Stan, Dr. Naira Stan, did it, did it, did, didn't they reject you from the university? Do you have a PhD? Hallelujah. Sit down. Because you sometimes have to research and study. And sometimes people have an idea of you, of ignorance. And you must courageously confront your ignorance and search for knowledge. Because you will find it. Amen. 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 Praise God. The uh, 13th point is courageously confront eternity. So many times I've been at funerals and people are scared of death. I've been bedside and people are scared of death you're gonna have to confront your eternity what will happen after you die who will you see where will you go 
courageously confront it and ask yourself the question, who do I want to see, a savior or a judge? I want to see my savior. Somebody say amen to that. Confront your eternity. Confront your life. Just remember that you are not going to live forever. As much as you're beautiful and much as everybody tell you that you're not growing old, you are. Every day I look in the mirror, I say, you're, 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 you're doing well. But you're getting old, boy. Sooner or later, I'll go into my grave. And I'll be happy to go. But before I go, I need to know that I've been fruitful on God's earth. Somebody say amen. So also, courageously discover the way. What is the way? Jesus said, I am the way. I can lead you. I can guide you. So that life does not become a confusion every day that you are in it. He is the way, the truth, and he's the life. I'm coming down. i got three minutes. Quickly. He is also the truth. And that means Jesus sees you as you are. And I can tell you things as they are. The truth. The truth. The truth. Stop lying. Tell your neighbor, stop lying. Don't lie to yourself and don't lie to anybody. You don't have to. Amen? I got two minutes. Two minutes. Woo! I'm coming down quick. Courageously embrace life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's asking you to find abundant life in him. Final things, courageously live your life joyful. Smile at somebody because some of you coming here vexed from, I don't know why you're coming here vexed from half past nine. In Jesus' name, smile. We put soft cushion on the bench for you to smile. Every day can't be a vexed day. Come on. That's why nobody now answer your phone to you. Final number 18, I say this, decisively find Jesus. He is the only one that can make those 18 steps happen in your life. Make a decision for your future. He's the only one. He's the way, the truth, the life. He is the resurrection and he can change you into what God wants you to be. This is a new day. Stand with me. We're about to bury that old year. And we're about to bring in that new year. You give me a countdown already, are you sure? Is that, is, that, is that our time? So now, speak a blessing over your life. Say, I am blessed. I am favored. My new year will be greater than my old year. I am the head and not the tail. I am blessed. I am blessed. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Amen. Hallelujah. Embrace somebody and receive the blessing. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go, before you go. Before you go, stand right where you are, please. Hallelujah. So, in your first minute of this year, get ready musicians. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, just stand right where you are. Lady, come. So now, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and good night. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're on a, on a sign off. Come on, come on. You ready? Yeah? You ready, ready, ready? Come on, ladies and men. Give us something to celebrate while you're greeting one another. You ready? All right. While they're getting ready, I want you to just go and greet somebody. Give them some love in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Happy New Year. Hey, clap your hands. Come on. Celebrate with me.
every word. May my life reflect the beauty of 